If you're new to TIG welding or thinking about getting into it, this video will teach you an easy way to start while avoiding the two biggest problems that most people face. The first problem is tension and awkwardness in your hand. The second is a difficulty seeing right. I've had a lot of success over the years introducing new people to TIG welding using this method. All you need is a quarter inch thick piece of mild steel, two by six inches long. Make sure it's cleaned really well. Grind or flapper the top to be shiny silver. Lay out a grid for seven drills with a scribe. Get your torch set up. I'm using a 2% lanthanated tungsten. A loose guideline for how far your tungsten should stick out is to not exceed the diameter of the cup. I look for any marks or scratches on my tungsten that are a bit back from that to help give me a sort of guide and a buffer. It's a good idea to start with a number eight cup, just one of the cheap pink ones, running it at about 20 CFH of argon. I'm using a 10 here, but these are pretty expensive and you'll probably break a few while learning. Drill one is starts and stops. Set your machine to 100 amps. Set your tungsten on the metal where you want to start. Put your hood down and lift the tungsten a tad off the metal. Push the pedal all the way down. You should hear your arc start and your gas flow and watch the circle puddle form. Then let your foot gently off the pedal and watch the puddle shrink. This is giving you a comfortable introduction to welding and training your eyes on what to see. Drill two is straight lines, where you'll let your hand get comfortable holding and moving the torch. Set yourself up so you're pulling the torch toward you. This will also get your head and eyes in the right position to see the puddle and see where you need to go. Don't overthink how you grip the torch. Just put it in your hand like you would a pencil. Don't worry about all the variables and mechanics here. Just watch the puddle and try to keep it the same size as you drag your hand and the puddle along the plate. If you see your puddle is getting too small or starting to wander around, it's likely that your arc length, the distance between your tungsten and the plate is too long. Tighten it up, get a little closer and you'll see the puddle um, expand and smooth out. These are things your hands and eyes are going to learn naturally as you do this drill. The best way to learn about machine settings and amps is to test it. This is a high amp drill. Set your machine to 130 amps. And we're going to fill in the next section again with straight lines. On the screen is my POV doing this drill. See if you notice any differences in my travel speed or the look of my puddle. Next up is low amps. Set your machine to 70 amps. Experiencing this contrast will teach you more in a couple minutes than spending hours and hours listening to others try and teach this stuff. The low amps will take some careful precision. Can you see the difference? You'll walk away having learned more than you even realize after finishing this drill. Now it's time to wiggle the puddle side to side as you move forward. This is sometimes where a breakthrough moment occurs with students. The puddle moving side to side lets the edge of the puddle show up better. You get to see that contrast easier. Your eyes will start to learn to lock in on that. We're not using filler metal yet because the puddle gets more complicated when you add filler. There's turbulence and swirling. And you have to be welding fairly well to get this nice edge and contrast effect here. Let your eyes learn to see here so that when we add filler later, you know what to look for. As you move the puddle side to side, try to line up your puddle on each edge with the weld you just left behind.
It's natural at this point to maybe feel your arm and hand tense up. All this precision in these straight lines. This drill is to loosen things up. Drawing some large Z's out into the open space will get your wrist moving in new ways. I'm a little shaky uh, pushing the puddle away on the Z's, but much smoother on the pullback. But the real secret to this drill is to prevent tunnel vision. You have to look wide here and out in front of where you need to go to pull off this design without ending up crooked and off the plate. Welding is sort of like driving at night. When a car with high beams comes at you, you have to use your peripheral vision to guide you. Where you hold the TIG torch makes more of a difference than many people realize. And I see a lot of beginners really get this wrong. We saved the center of the plate for last on purpose. This is to force you to hold the TIG torch on the very end of the handle and extend your reach all the way out into the middle. If you notice these earlier lessons, I've been pretty choked up near the cup on the TIG torch. And most professionals who freehand a lot hold the torch that way and it's for a really good reason. And this drill is uh, to illustrate that. Also, uh, what's a good lesson without a nice challenge at the end? Uh, don't get too frustrated if you end up dipping your tungsten a bunch. That's pretty normal when learning. Uh, just keep at it. Do the drills over again if you need to. And you'll actually learn more than you realize and progress pretty quickly through these lessons. I know just watching this, it might seem like these were really simple drills. But trust me, a lot of thought went into this and it has a proven track record of setting people up for success. So give it a try for yourself, let us know how it goes, and stay tuned for lesson two where we introduce Fiddler Metals.